time at the beach all day, sipping champagne with the stars, but actually I spent quite a lot of time doing this, because there are so many great films to see. My favourite film was The Square, because I thought it was kind of, it's very challenging and provocative. The Myroids stories, um, I just thought it was a very excellent uh, movie with Dustin Hoffman, he was a plus acting there. The film about Godard, which is called uh, Le Redoutable, but that's funny. Les vrais acteurs, moi je trouve ça con, je les méprise. C'est vrai, vous leur dites de pleurer, ils pleurent, vous leur dites de rire, ils rire, vous leur dites de marcher à quatre pattes de le fond, enfin, je trouve ça grotesque. Killing of a Sacred Deer by Yorgos Lanthimos, and that was one of the most beautiful experiences of my whole life. Le Naomi Kawase, je trouve que c'est un très très joli film, c'est dans la lumière. There's horror, thrillers, romance, and films calling for action, like an inconvenient sequel from the former US Vice President Al Gore. He was here a decade ago with his documentary that changed the public's perception of climate change. Let's go and check this one out. most criticized scene in the movie An Inconvenient Truth was showing that the combination of sea level rise and storm surge would flood the 9-11 memorial site. And people said, what a terrible exaggeration. Hurricane Sandy slammed into New York City last night, flooding the World Trade Center site. Al Gore, hello. Hello. We're here at the Cannes Film Festival. Do you think people at a festival like this care about climate change? Based on what people have said to me while I'm here, I think the answer is definitely yes. And I have a, a special place in my heart for Cannes because 11 years ago, Cannes was the place where, in many ways, the modern climate movement was launched. And it taught me that a movie can be the most powerful way to tell a story w with meaning for people. And now, a decade later, there is a new story that shows how we can solve the climate crisis. We have the solutions now. That's what one of the things that's changed in the last 11 years. So I'm very optimistic. But this movie uh, is intended to convince people that this is a time for action because the demand for solutions to be implemented must come from the people. The next generation would be justified in looking back at us and asking, what were you thinking? Couldn't you hear what the scientists were saying? Couldn't you hear what Mother Nature was screaming at you? Now, you've been talking about climate change for something like 20 years. In one phrase, can you describe your mission? To solve the climate crisis. Uh, there is a collision between uh, human civilization, as it's presently organized, and the surprisingly fragile ecological system of the planet. We're using the atmosphere as an open sewer. 110 million tons per day put into the atmosphere, trapping heat, causing all of these uh, terrible consequences. Now Mother Nature is telling us that we have to change. But businesses and technologists and uh, others have contributed to the emergence of these fantastic solutions. Solar power has become so cheap, uh, and wind power, and electric vehicles, and efficiency improvements. Now we know that we can solve the climate crisis in ways that make our lives better. So we have to summon the will to really enact these solutions. Some people feel despair at times, but despair is just another form of denial. The late Nelson Mandela said, it's always impossible until it's done. We can solve this, and I hope that once again, can will be the place where a new round of momentum for solutions is launched. It's crunch time at the climate change conference in Paris. Still some really tough negotiations going on. What would it take to shift to renewables? I'm talking about breaking the impasse. Virtually every nation in the entire world agreed to get to zero greenhouse emissions. It is unprecedented. It's time to put America first. That includes a promise to cancel billions in climate change spending. 
our plan will end the EPA. How do you move forward with someone like Donald Trump in power? Do you think there's a chance he might change his mind about climate change? I think there is an excellent chance that he will decide to keep the United States in the Paris Agreement. I'm hopeful. I have criticized his policies and many of his appointments. But I would add this. No one person can stand in the way of solving the climate crisis. And in, in my country, state governments are moving now. States like California and New York are moving even faster than the commitments made by former President Obama in Paris a, a year ago. Uh, businesses are stepping up to pledge they will go to 100 percent renewable energy, many of them. And individuals are saying we have to take this into our own hands and help solve the climate crisis. You've compared the climate change movement to the civil rights movement. Yes. Where's the tipping point? We are at the tipping point now. When I was a young boy growing up in the southern United States, in some of the days when the civil rights movement picked up momentum, it seemed impossible. But it changed after we crossed that tipping point. And the tipping point for the civil rights movement, as the abolition movement before it and the fight for women's equality and the fight for gay rights more recently, uh, is the same tipping point that we have arrived at with the climate movement. That tipping point is defined by the moment when all of the extraneous arguments fade into the background and we see the stark and clear choice between right and wrong. Once we get to that point, then the outcome is foreordained because of who we are as human beings. This movement is in the tradition of every great movement that has advanced humankind. We're not going to recognize it. We don't want to discuss it. It is right to save humanity. It is wrong to pollute this earth. It is right to give hope to the future generations. Can you tell the people watching one thing that they could do to help with the climate change movement? When the conversations about the climate crisis, don't let denial go unchallenged. Learn about it. Be a conscious consumer. And when you pick the more climate friendly alternatives in the marketplace, you not only reduce your own impact, you send a message to the business community uh, that they are already beginning to hear. And then most importantly, be active as a citizen in demanding that candidates and those elected officials representing you make this a top priority. I'll go, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Don't let anybody tell you that we're going to get on rocket ships and live on Mars. This is our home.